Hey guys, Basil and Wolf from Grayson Hobby, and today we have something to show you that if you own a jumper radio, you have to do it. So today we're going to go over the frequency tuning uh, procedure for the FreeSky style receiver, uh, whether you have D16, D8, uh, the integrated SPI receivers inside your uh, quads, you do want to tune it in order to fine tune it so you don't have fail safes or lower range. So if you're flying the jumper radio and have any kind of FreeSky protocol receiver, you have to do this. Yeah, you definitely want to do it. Um, I mean, can you fly without doing it? Yeah, but will it possibly affect your range or cause fail safes? Yes. Yes. All right, guys, like always, if you find value in this video, give us a big thumbs up. Be sure to like the video and subscribe to our channel. We have all these tutorials on all the jumper radios and all reviews on certain quads. And be sure to support our shop, uh, shop at gracenobby.com slash jumper for all your jumper needs. Everything yep. ships out here, right? Yeah. All right, well, what do we gotta do? All right, so what we're gonna do is some frequency tuning. Um, when you're using a FreeSky receiver, whether it's a D8 or D16 receiver, they do recommend that you fine tune the frequency on the uh, it's a CC2500 chip or whatever it's called. Basically, it's the chip that they use for the FreeSky receivers and transmitters. Inside the jumper, right? Inside the jumper, okay. and you're tuning the one inside the jumper to work with uh, either official FreeSky or whatever receiver you got in those modes. There's two different ways. Um, to do this because the RSSI displays through telemetry on the R1 or RXSRs, et cetera. Um, but the XM series, the XM, XM plus, it's through the OSD, so you won't have that feedback going through. So I'll show you a way to do it with something like that too. So basically, let's get this started. Right. And we're gonna do this with a, this is a brand new out of the box radio. I flashed a couple models on it just real quick. Um, but you'll see there's a little difference in this and this may vary from what you have if you have an older jumper with an external module um, or an internal upgrade and you're running older firmware you won't have some of these features so it's a good idea to update the firmware to yeah, so what model? Open TX, guys. So jumper Wait TX. Wait a minute, mine's different than that. So as of now they are shipping with Open TX. Uh, this particular radio has 2.3.2 um, and it has these options enabled, the Crossfire, the Flex9, Internal Module, Multi-Module, Lewis Grips, uh, Lewis C, and PPMUS enabled. Um, so that's what the checkboxes you select when you create the file. Okay. Um, if you want to update your radio to match this. this internal Module also is running version 1.2.1.85. So if you have the older 1.2.1.5, which I believe is what they originally shipped with on the internal module, um, you'd want to update the firmware to do this as well. Um, there's also a couple patches here and there that they've had uh, since the older firmware. So it'd definitely probably be a good idea to update it. Keep in mind, updating it, you may lose some of your old models going from Jumper TX to Open TX. Not may, you uh, probably will. <laughs> there might be a, a workaround for it. I'm gonna go ahead and use the jumper r1 receiver which this will follow the same frequency or same concept as the rxsrs xsrs etc the x series right? uh, the free sky x series like uh rx8 or x x 8r x6r etc um so we're going to do that so i've already bound this receiver to this radio here um, on this model and i've bound it with the frequency at zero the fine tune if you are having problems binding your receiver, initially you can't get it to bind, you can try a, either a positive 40 value or a negative 40 value Show me where that for the fine-tuning. Yeah. Okay. So right here, you can either do that there after you bind it. Um, again, typically you're gonna be pl pretty close to neutral on these um, within like a 20 or so range for tuning. Um, it just depends on how far out the module is, and it's not its not a bad thing, it's just the tuning frequency of the, the crystal, I guess you'd say, it, it kind of realistically. This one bound up at zero, so now that we've bounded it at uh, zero, you can actually see, and this is the reason why I wanted to use this this OpenTX. Um, when I go to the fine tune, it actually tells me my RSI on this style receiver. You will not get that on the XM series, but this one happens to do it. Now I'm gonna move the quad, now that you guys can see here, I'm gonna move the quad uh, about 10 feet away just uh, so it's not swamping the radio and affect any settings. Okay. Um, so I'm gonna move it down here. I do also have fail safe set up on the quad to where as soon as it loses signal, it'll start beeping um, a as the fail safe sets the beeper. Okay. And I have the motor beacon on that particular right. one because there's no beeper. I'm gonna start with a negative number. I'm gonna keep going down. I'm gonna go pretty far first. Okay. Uh, beeping. Beeping. The reason I have the beeper on the, the flight controller going is because it's faster to update than the actual uh, RSSI telemetry. Okay. 
So I'm going to go back here. I'm going to slowly work my way back. So what are we looking for when the beeper goes I off? I want to hear it quit beeping. Okay. Telemetry recovered. So I got telemetry back. Critical. But that's critical. So I'm going to keep, even though it's beeping, it's giving me false commands. That's basically saying beta flight, the flight controller is detecting invalid inputs. So it's critical there. All right. And it just actually went to zero. So let me keep going. I'm going to get this. Telemetry recovered. So now I got telemetry. Okay. I'm going to go back. Work my way back and forth. So negative 63. RSI Telemetry is gone lost. at negative 63. All right. So I'm going to record that number for my negative. It's going to be negative 63. So now I'm going to work my way all the way back over. So that's basically fail safe, right? RFC. Yeah, I'm in fail safe on the high. Telemetry recovered. And I'm going to go back down. RF signal critical. All right, so we're getting we're getting close. So it's 66. Telemetry lost. 65, it's signal. 66, no signal. Yeah. So telemetry lost. 66. So I lost at six, negative 63 and 66 on full power. Now, just for the heck of it, guys, I'm going to switch it to low power, and I want to see if we get different numbers telemetry here. Recovered. Okay, so I'm going to turn on low power mode, and I want to see if we get different values. RF signal critical. You think that distance would matter if we're only seven feet away? Low power and high power? You never know. I want to see if it affects it. Granted, if you're probably 20 feet away, it probably would affect it more. Yeah. RF signal critical. So it's still actually about the same. So I don't think, for those of you who are gonna ask if it low power and high power makes a difference, Telemetry this is the only reason I'm recovered. doing it, because yeah. I don't think it's gonna make a huge difference. At least at this distance, does that make a big yeah. difference? So if you wanna try it at home and you're like 20 feet away and mess with it, you might be able to fine tune it even better. Um, Telemetry lost. Telemetry six, recovered. Yeah, so negative 63 is what I lost there. So I actually, despite it being on high power, low power, I was Ooh, that's horrible writing for you guys trying to read that. Um, 63, uh, negative 63 and positive 66 were both the same. So what we need to do is take our... Uh-oh, math. Math alert. 66. Same school kids. Minus. Sorry about the scribbles, guys. Um, okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take our values. All right. And we're going to add negative 63. Oh, how do you do it? On, oh, negative 63. And we're going to add 66 to it. So we got a number of three. Okay. Um, so you're supposed to take that and divide it by two. One and a half. That's 1.5. Unfortunately, the radio doesn't do a half decimal, so it's you can either set it to one or two. Um, set so what, what to one or two? The art, uh, the tuning. All right. So because my numbers were the same for both, we're going to take our frequency fine tune, and we're going to set it, which I shouldn't have to tilt that. Mm -hmm. We're going to set it to, I'm going to set it to two. Okay. And pretty much that's all you have to do. So now, we, after you set the fine tune, now we know what our number is for this receiver, and they do recommend rebinding the quad after frequency tuning. All right, let's do so it. So now that we have that, we're gonna just hold the button, power it on. I like that little switch there. Yeah, I just wired that up. All right, so now we're binding. Power cycle. And now we're bound. So that is with a jumper receiver, mm -hmm. which was tuned at the jumper factory on yeah, so jumper it's pretty, equipment. Pretty close to zero with yeah. the jumper receiver. All right, so let's do a traditional genuine free sky. Yeah, Seven. okay. This beta FPV quad. So we're actually bound here. But what I did is I set the fail safe. Um, to when the receiver loses signal and failsafe kicks on in beta flight, instead of holding the beeper or whatever the configuration for the beeper switch is, I have it set to negative um, 2000, I'm sorry, I have it set to 2000, which enables the same thing as if my switch was on. So failsafe is buzzer. Yeah, I got the buzzer yeah. on failsafe. Yeah. So I'm gonna move, again, move the quad over, heal. Okay. And I'm gonna do the same procedure. 
And this time, now because our size is going to show zero because this is not a two-way receiver uh, or a two-way telemetry, we're going to do the same process. Let me do, let's see, my minus and my plus. Let's see what we get here. So I'm going to go, I'm going to start with a negative. And then we're listening for the beep, right? We're listening for beeps. So before we're at 64, right? Yeah, 66. So wow, that's a little off there. 74. Seventy-one. Seventy. Seventy-one. Seventy-two. Seventy-three. Seventy-four. Seventy-four. So while he's doing that, we're just I'm gonna say consistent negative seventy-five is where we lost. Negative it. seventy-five. So just so you know that's what's beeping over here. That's so. the motor's beeping. Yeah, yeah. Alright. Basically buzzer mode. Lost motor uh, lost beacon is set on. Okay, and so now we go it. to the other way. Positive. So what, would you write it down? Yeah, yeah negative 75. Okay. Wow, that's at 46. That's crazy. Oh, yeah, I want to say 46. All right. So before we were almost equal, 63 and 66. Now we're at 75. Yeah. So this is showing five. that with a factory receiver or a different brand receiver, it's not tuned. So we're going to do negative 75. I'm actually going to move that, that so it's not annoying us. Plus 46 divided by 2. Negative 14.5 is wow. the number we're looking for. That is, that's, so that's so, telling us that's off by 14 clicks right <laughs> was that percentage i wonder if it's percentage or not i think it's like decibel probably. decibel okay uh, there's i'm not sure yeah i'm an electrician uh, electric all i know is this is the tuning process um i'm gonna do negative 14 on this one now do you do this on high power or low power this is on low power mode okay the whole so time. that's actually i would think that'd be, be safer to do on low power so uh, i think it'd be more sensitive yeah that's what i meant so um i'm gonna rebind it now okay Gotta get my fat fingers in here, guys. Sorry. And while he's doing that, you should go pick up a shirt from me. Look at this. All right. Oh, I'm gonna stay here. It's a long walk down there. All right. So now we're bound. So we're upside down. There we go. All right. So we're good. Yep. So that's how you bind it there. Okay. So. Um, the reason I set up the beeper mode is because if you try to use it through the on-screen display with the RSSI or even on the computer screen, um, the RSSI is a calculation. Once it hits below a certain point, it goes in like a fail-safe. So what do we need to do to set up my... So when you're using an XM receiver that doesn't have the telemetry feeding back to the radio, it's only on OSD or something like that, if you have a receiver, um, this could be like the ET series quads with the AC900s or the XM series. Um, what you want to do is set up the quad and this is just a temporary setup you would want to set the mode for the beeper and make sure your beeper is enabled i'm going to have beeper on at around 2000 here okay so this bar area in here so i know 2000 is within range okay so that is and then i need to make beeper? sure expert modes turned on here and then fail safe will be appearing go to fail safe then i set beeper which is aux 3 my aux 3 is set up on beeper and I'm going to set it, not hold. I'm going to change it from hold, which is default value. I'm going to set it and make sure it's set to 2000. And then I'm going to save it. That's it. That will give me. That will make a beep when you're at loss RSSI or a loss signal. But say you don't have an actual buzzer and you only have motor beacons. Okay. Which a lot of quads do. Don't a lot buzzer. of the micros. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to make sure. The beacon is set to about two or three, so I can hear it. Okay. And then RX set is enabled. Okay. So if you don't have a buzzer, that's what you need to do. Yep. Easy peasy. So those are the three th settings to change in it um, to create a beacon. That way you can uh, set your receiver or your transmitter. By audio. Yep. All right. All right, guys. So there you have it. This is the video on how to tune it. Um, again, we showed you two different ways because there are videos out there that kind of tell you about how to do it, but a lot of people are using... RXSRs and all that that have two-way telemetry um, and you know this one 
uh, this video kind of also covered the XM style that well, doesn't have two-way symmetry. Yeah. So I think that was a nice little addition. Yes, there. good job. Well, 